And as Olaf said, I'm not going to talk about LifeRay, which is what I usually talk about, about or about modularity, but I'm going to talk about something that I'm very, very sure is going to be of a lot of interest for all of you, and that is machine learning. And I believe we, we actually live in a very, very exciting moment in life, because if I ask you these questions, you know, if I ask you what technologies right now, or what te upcoming technologies are going to make a huge difference in the world, I'm pretty sure that all of you are going to come up with some ideas. And these are just some of the ones that I, I thought as I was creating this first slide, but there are many more. It's very, very exciting times. But if there is one of these that I hear more and more as a technology that is promising to really change the world, that's machine learning. Right? So, how many of you have heard the term machine learning in the last month? Right? So, it's almost everybody, right? So, wait for next month. It's going to be crazy, right? So, the, the question that you have to ask yourself when you hear something so often is, you know, is it just hype? So, what, what do you think? Is it, is it just hype? Uh, Tough question, right? So what does a developer do when you hear this, this promise, this super cool new technology, uh, but you don't know if it's just hype, right? So what does a developer do? So it's very simple. You just get in front of your laptop, and then you start figuring it out. And it's also exciting times, because there is all these technologies, but then you can just sit behind your laptop, and you can say, I want to learn about machine learning. And it's everything in this small box. I can just learn everything, right? So you start, and, and well, uh, it turns out it's not that easy. You start coming up with problems that you had not expected. And the reality is that learning a new technology, it's not that easy. As Solov was saying, uh, I and, and some colleagues, as a result of both some uh, work-related assignments and personal interest, uh, several months ago, at the beginning of the year, we started uh, learning more, about, uh, more and more about machine learning and, and neural networks. And we started finding all of these uh, challenges right, to, to learn about these technologies, to learn about uh, machine learning enough to know if you know, it's really revolutionary or is it just hype. So we've learned a lot. We've gone through a lot of hurdles, and we thought, what if we were able to package everything that we learn into you know, something, a package, and we present it here at DEF CON so that it's much easier for you guys to answer that question on your own. So basically, what we are here, what I am here to present is a ladder. So it's much easier for you to go over this, these hurdles. So the first thing I want to I say before I go any further is I'm not an expert in machine learning. There are so many experts in machine learning, so I'm not one of them. I'm just someone who has really enjoyed learning about this new technology, and I really enjoy teaching as well. So I'm going to try to convince as many of you as possible to go home and do some machine learning. You are, it's OK if you stay for the party. But right after, you have to do machine learning. That's, that's my goal. Let's see how many of you I, I convince. So first thing first, just so that it's easy for you, so that you don't have to take notes, the slides are already available. That's the number one question I always get in any of my talks. When are the slides available? They already are available. So you can just download it from the app if you have the app installed. And I figured if 400 people try to download it right now, probably the Wi-Fi will go down. So you may not want to download it. So you can also. Uh, access it on that URL, tinyurl.com slash liferayml. ML stands for machine learning, and you will hear it a lot. OK, so are you ready to learn machine learning? OK, not machine learning, Olaf, sorry. No. Are you ready to learn machine learning? Yes. OK, let's go. So first of all, let's make sure we all understand what machine learning is, OK? Very simple definition. Machine learning is a technology that allows computers to do certain things, to solve certain problems that up until now only humans could solve. OK, that's very generic. Just words, very boring, right? So let's take a picture. That's a very visual example. So you guys are all developers, or most of you. And if not, you have uh, knowledge of development. So if I tell you this picture was taken with a mobile phone, right? and I ask you, write a program to tell me where exactly that picture was taken, in which park, how many of you are confident you would be able to write that program? How many? 
What if you have Google? Okay, so basically, uh, in your phone, there is going to be some metadata. And uh, you can, you can uh, geolocate the image, and you can find what it is, right? It's, it's kind of easy. Uh, now, is there a bird in that picture? What if you had to write a program to say if there is a bird in that picture or not? How many of you would do it? I'm actually very interested, right? So how would you do it? TensorFlow. TensorFlow. Great question. How many of you know what TensorFlow is? Same people, basically. So you have an answer. So, so we're, for the rest of you, we're going to find out how they would do it. OK? So let's just start with something a little bit simpler. How would you tell apart an orange from an apple? This orange from this apple? Color. Nice. So color. One is orange, and the other one is, is red. What if, you know? It's, it's a black and white. There are no colors. And sometimes, uh, when computers have to process images, you have to take away colors because they, they are pretty problematic. So why, what do you do? The weight? The width. The shape. OK, what else? Texture. Wow, that's pretty difficult. Too. But yeah, the texture. So if we keep going, basically, we will end up with a series of rules Right? And you can write that in a program. You can detect some of these rules. And you can figure out if it's an apple or an orange. Right? That's one of the most common approaches to, uh, to machine learning, sorry, to, to artificial intelligence for many years. It's called expert systems. So there is one expert, a human expert, who codes all these rules. And then you put them in a program. And then the program is smart. Right? However, for very complex systems, it just never, never ended up working well, right? So imagine you have an apples and oranges, but it's in a much more complex environment. So suddenly the problem is it's much tougher, and expert systems don't really work that well. So machine learning is a different approach to expert systems, and it's actually starting to work very, very well in these type of problems. And not only machine learning, but one part of machine learning, which is neural nets and deep learning in particular, is really achieving jaw-dropping results. Wow, that guy is, is very smart, very intelligent. Unfortunately, computers have a really hard time doing this. This is another example of what suddenly, through machine learning, computers are able to, to do not only completes, complete sentences, and just imagine the number of rules you would have to put in a system to be able to complete this sentence. But neural nets, in particular, are able to do amazing things. So one of them that I'm, I'm really amazed by is automatic generation of Hemingway text. So there are these guys who take books of Hemingway and give a train a neural net uh, so that it's able to recognize whether a book is written by Hemingway or not. And that's, you know, it's pretty cool. But one day they think of reversing it and see what happens. And what happens is that that neural net is actually able to write like Hemingway, right? So this is a real text, which, to be honest, it really makes little sense. But it actually reads pretty much like Hemingway, if, if you've read Hemingway, right? So, and this is automatically written. It's pretty scary, isn't it? Some people say it's going to be able to write code, but I, I don't believe that part. So we've seen more or less what machine learning is, and, and we've seen how neural nets in particular, neural networks, is you know, kind of like what is really changing things right now, one of the most promising technologies. So let's learn a little bit about how they work. So first of all, let's put it in context. We have artificial intelligence. Then we have machine learning. Then as part of machine learning, we have neural nets. And then you may have heard of this term a lot lately, too, which is deep learning. Deep learning is one type of neural nets. OK? So as I was learning, one of the things that I've had a a hard time with is the terminology. There is so many term terms in the machine learning world that if you don't know the, the basic ones and they don't explain it so, so much, then it's kind of hard to even understand the article. So I'm going to try to present some of the basic ones. So first, what is a neural net? 
So it's usually represented something like this. It's three layers of neurons here, uh, four in the first layer, five in the second one, just one. It could be any number. In the one in the middle, there is sometimes 20, 200, 500, uh, big number. Then the first ones are inputs, and then there are weights. So the next layer receives a set of inputs with some weights. And then there is a mathematical formula, right? And the mathematical, mathematical formula takes the inputs, weight, and then applies some function, some mathematical function, right? Pretty straightforward uh, once you know it. And how does it work? I mentioned before, when we were talking about Hemingway, how there is training. So I'm going to use one example, which is a typical book example, which is calculating the price of a house. So the way this works is pretty simple. So you have a house, and you know the price. Very important in training. You know the price. So you put it through the network. The network is just random, and it says 200K. It could have said $1. It could have said 2 million. It says a number. And then you have to train the network and say, no, it's actually a bit less. Okay? And this is done through what is called backpropagation, and one of the most common, for, common uh, uh, algorithms to do that is called as gradient descent. So yes, so that it sounds more or less familiar. And then as a result, the neural net changes. Okay? So I've shown it with one house, but usually this goes in batches, like 200 houses. And then you do that again and again and again and again. And this is something um, kind of different for developers. You know how when you are combining something and it takes a minute and it's really painful? This is going to take hours sometimes. So it's pretty painful, but it's also amazing what, what uh, happens afterwards, which is now you have a house. Uh, you know the price as well, but you're not going to tell anyone. And then suddenly, the train model tells you, and then you can check, yeah, this is correct. OK? So this is more or less how a neural net works. And then deep learning is more or less the same, but you have more layers of neurons. Okay? So it seems uh, pretty straightforward, very easy to understand. The reason why deep learning is really catching up right now is because the processing power is huge right now. So before, these were so slow that nobody would be able to use it. And by using deep learning, you can solve more complex problems. So everything that we've seen, now I'm going to throw another term at you, is called supervised learning. It's what you will see most often in any articles. But there is another very important type of neural nets, and it's called unsupervised learning. The main difference is that with supervised learning, as we've seen, you start with a set that you know the answer for. You know the prices of the house. But with unsupervised learning, you know nothing. So you can probably wonder, OK, so how am I going to train it? So actually, it's a different type of training. Basically, you throw a lot of data at it. You throw a lot of pictures of fruits. And you have no idea what the fruit are, is. And the, I, li I love this example, because I have no idea, actually, what those fruits are. But then what the neural net is going to be able to tell you is some characteristics about that data set. In this case, that neural net is telling you that this set of fruits are the same fruit. I have no idea what the name is, but they are the same fruit. And this is very interesting, especially combined with the other type of, of neural nets. So defining the topology, how many layers, in what shape, how the nodes are going to be connected, is, is one of the most important things to do. So uh, there is this tool that I want to present you, which is a tool just to learn how machine learning works. So it's pretty cool. And I'm going to just show you a small example. So here, uh, oops, what's going on? Uh, hold on a second. Uh, that's not what you were supposed to see. This is what you were supposed to see. OK, so uh, here you have this data set. OK, and this data set is, I'm going to make it bigger, it's just a set of points, right? And basically, some of them are orange, some of them are blue. And you have a neural net. The input is the x and the y, the horizontal axis, the vertical axis. It's called x1 and x2. And then you have some neurons. And then, basically, this neural net is going to try to find out, given the x and the y, whether the dot is blue or it's orange. Basically, the way it's going to do it is it's going to get half of the points, and then uh, this is specified here, 50%. And then it's going to figure out the rest 
whether it's, it's blue or green. So if I hit play, you're going to be able to see here in the background uh, whether uh, for a point in that position, it would say if it's blue or orange. So if you look at it, you'll see it's done, right? In 0.124 seconds, uh, it's been able to say all of the dots in the surrounding are orange, all of the points in the middle are, are green. So they have more complex data sets, and this is my favorite. It's super hard, right? So if I try this again, I can try very quick, you'll find out that, yeah, there's no way it's going to do it. So how do you do that? You start adding layers, and then maybe, eventually, you will be able to do it. So I'm going to leave that to you as an exercise. So I want you to do this at home. Just go to that URL and try to solve the spiral data set. And I'm, give, I'm giving you some clues. And there are two different ways of doing it. And th both are very, very interesting. One is with a regular, uh, with just one layer. And the other one is with deep learning, adding more layers. Very interesting. So one of the first things we learned here is that machine learning is much more like training your dog. So you know when you start, but you don't know when he's going to learn something. Right. So let's try to get a little bit more hands on. How do I get started? Many of the problems that I showed, many of the challenges we found is actually what language do we use, what libraries. They mentioned TensorFlow over here is the cool new kid in, the, in, the, in town. So thankfully for you, I've just chosen this small number of technologies you need to learn to get started. You're welcome. Well, I, actually, there are many more. Uh, I, I've, I thought that maybe you didn't want to learn all of this, so I'm going to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to pick just a few. Okay? These are my recommendations to get it started. First, Python. And at first, I just tried to do it in Java, because that's what I'm used to. Just get over it, use Python, and you will be happy with it. The truth is, you're not going to write so much code. Um, Python is, is pretty similar to what you are familiar with already. A Spark. Uh, machine learning library, especially in, in the new version in, in Spark 2, is very, very cool, has lots of algorithms, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, now, it has one limitation, which is it doesn't contain any neural net technology. So what do you use? TensorFlow. Whew. Thankfully, they said the same thing that I did. So, thank you. Uh, TensorFlow is a new library, has exactly one year. It was open sourced by Google. That's what they use internally, and they've open sourced it, and it's amazing. And then I also want to present you another tool, which is not as well known, but it's awesome for learning, and I'm going to show it to you. It's Jupyter, and it's a mix of an IDE and a Google Docs all together. It's pretty nice. So I want to show you two examples, two examples that we've prepared very carefully to help you get started with machine learning. So Spark, how many of you here use Spark? Or Hadoop? OK, some hands. So basically, it's the most well-known and most used library for processing big data. Right? And machine learning is also about processing lots of data. Right? So it's actually very easy if you're using Spark to just use the, the machine learning library that, that comes with it. For those of you who, who don't, are, are not using Spark, you're saying, OK, now I need to install Spark. Spark. It seems pretty, pretty hard. Don't worry, we have you covered. But in return, we're going to give you homework. How many of you wanted to have homework? I know. You're, oh, some, some people actually want it. So we've made it very easy for you. Basically, we've created a Docker image for you guys that has everything pre-installed. And if you don't have Docker installed, don't worry. Nowadays, it's super easy. In the slides that you're going to download, I didn't show it here, but you have instructions on how to download it for Linux, for Mac, for Windows, and some basic commands. It's super easy. So basically, once you have Docker installed, you run that command. And once you run that command, you are going to get this. This. OK? So this is Jupyter. I was talking about it. OK, so this is what you're going to get. Probably not so many files, because I've already executed it. And once you execute it, you're going to get this. This is an ID, online ID. You don't have to install anything. Just execute that command. 
Go to this URL in your laptop, and you have a machine learning program. A machine learning program that created one of my colleagues called uh, Ricardo. And it explains you how it works. Okay? So basically, this is an ID, and I can execute from here. I'm going to show you here. I can just run cell selected down below. You know, so I can just run that, run that cell, and it's going to execute. And I'm going to do it with the keyboard, but I can just start executing and I can start seeing the results of what I'm executing right below, right? And I can see the data that I'm loading. What are the, what are the characteristics of the data? I can plot it so that I can see if the data is right. I can do some additional operations with the data. And then right here, that's where we execute this. This is basically the training, OK? So I execute this. Uh, there is an error because I skipped some steps. But if you follow step by step, then the program runs. And what I really love this, and the reason why I'm presenting it to you as a way of learning, is because you can go back one step, change the code, change any variable, change this 1.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.001, and train again. It's super, super useful for learning. OK. So basically, I'm going to give you this homework assignment. Right? It's, there is no easier way to learn. So basically, you have to download data from a website called kgold.com. And you're going to thank me for creating an account in this website, but I'm not going to tell you why. And then I want you to execute things one by one and try changing some things. You don't have to understand all of the code. You don't even have to understand Python. But there are some explanations in the code itself to help you uh, know what you can change and see how the results start to be different. So thanks to Ricardo again for preparing that example. And then I have another example, which is TensorFlow, neural nets. Basically, it's a program to help recognize images and what's in images. TensorFlow, as I said, is a new library by Google. Uh, and I'm also using TFLearn. TFLearn is a layer on top of TensorFlow that it's a higher level abstraction. And it's, again, much, much easier to use. You basically have one method for each layer that you are building. OK, so I have another homework assignment. I have another Docker image just prepared to play with TensorFlow. So you can actually run both at the same time. And the, I, I've actually, in that command, I've made it easy for you. So it's a different port. So you don't run into conflict. And I want you to, again, run cell by cell and be able to adjust so that you get a better result. And there is one thing you are going to learn as you do this exercise, which is, Training neural nets is slow. And sometimes, if you don't have a good graphics card or you don't have it configured to, to run the graphics card and the Docker image is not, then it's going to even die and say, sorry, I died. Right? So it's, it's pretty cool. Right? It's a very good experience. And this is what you are going to see. Very good example. We've added all the explanations in there. So one of the things that you learn is once you've done all that training, it's like your puppy. And one of the great ideas that I've seen is people actually selling these models. And this is a, a very interesting business model, and also something very interesting for those of us starting with machine learning. We can actually tr buy a trained model so that someone else has to spend a lot of time building that model and training it. It's very interesting. And this same technology can be used for facial recognition. And even, this is a super amazing technology that we're starting to see. Google even create, uh, announced an API to do this just by using their API, which is you give it an image, and it describes what is in the image. It's really amazing. So as I said, when you run it in your laptop, when you have complex neural networks, it starts to be very slow. So when you're going to run it in production, then you're most probably not going to be able to run it out of your existing hardware. But fortunately, there are really, really awesome platforms that are making it easier than ever before to run neural networks. And usually, instead of regular CPUs, they have GPUs. So Google Cloud, in particular, I find it very interesting because it has a very easy way uh, to run TensorFlow. Right? But it's not the only one. Uh, Amazon also recently announced their machine learning um, machines. And Microsoft also has their own and has very cool tools that allow you to define the machine learning or the neural net graphically. Very, very cool tools. 
Okay, I went super fast. So let's recap. Machine learning. Is it the next revolution or just another hype? Just after seeing this, you haven't done the homework, but you're going to, of course. Uh, how many of you say it's a revolution? Okay, how many of you say it's just hype? Okay, not so many. What do you, what do you guys think that I believe? Uh, evolution. evolution, wow. Okay, I, you know what I believe is I think it's both, right? And I don't think they are contradictory. So if you look at Gartner, I don't know if you've seen this picture by Gartner, but basically machine learning is at the very top, right? Uh, so that means, you know, everybody's talking about it. We don't know yet how, lo how low it's going to go, right? So I, I see this in a different way, right? So very soon, if you're not doing it yet, you're going to hear a lot of people saying machine learning is going to solve whatever problem you have. Everything is, they're going to solve everything, right? And just like Gardner, the analyst, oh, hold, hold on, before the analyst, you're going to start seeing people saying, my product has it. That's yours? Wow, that's scary, right? And then, obviously, the analysts are going to start saying, ooh, hold on. So, um, the analysts are going to start saying, hey, your product should have machine learning. But this is the scariest one, right? Which is, your boss is going to come to you and say, let's add machine learning to this product, right? And uh, most probably, he will have no idea what he means. So how do we protect ourselves from that excessive hype which is going to happen? But I still get the good parts, the evolution or revolution, right? So my take on it is you have to learn. You have to read about it. And this technology is different enough that if you don't play with it, and I've just given you three tools to play with it, uh, you are not going to understand it. So do the homework. TensorFlow, Spark Machine Learning, uh, and then TFLearn. And I want to use the opportunity to thank Manuel de la Peña, he's over here, Ricardo and Eduardo Garcia, who is also over here. They help a lot prepare these examples, so that it's super easy for you guys to play with it. And playing with it is, is really necessary to understand it. And I also encourage you to to read more about it. So I, I have my selection of articles, if you're interested, in, in GetPocket. So I, almost every day, I add there some article about machine learning that I really hope that will help you learn. So I really hope you feel like this right now, so you not only have a laptop, but you have a lot so that you can learn. And if you do, then I will have achieved my goal with this session. So please let me know by voting, by tweeting, whatever. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks a lot. So we've, Thank we're you probably very much. done. I think we have time for another question. Yes, this, or awesome. not another, but for a question. Is there somebody who is keen on asking a question? If there is, there, okay. Uh, where were you? Okay. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, why do you think uh, it can't write source code? Sorry, can, can you repeat? Uh, why do you think machine learning can't write software? Why am I using software? My machine learning software? Um, why uh, machine learning cannot write software? Why cannot? Yes. Oh, uh, that's what okay. you <laughs> said. No, maybe maybe it will. I, I don't. I just don't think it's anywhere near. So we should not be worried yet. But but it might. It might. <laughs> I okay. heard there was a yet in there. <laughs> yeah. Don't be okay, worried. Okay. So yet. we have an awesome party there, and I'll be I'll be around. So I'd love to have talks with all of you about machine learning if I inspire you enough. Thanks a lot, guys.